Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Paranormal Roundtable. Three words. With me, as always, is my co-host. It's me, Sal. How Sal. y'all doing? Or as I call him, Mondo Saurician. Hey, hey, there we go. I could have been on that show. You, you could have been on. You could have been. You could have been on Star Wars Encounters. Yeah, I could have been on that one. Yeah. Wow, that's that's, <laughs> that's crazy. That would have been an interesting show. You know. <laughs> I think you would have. I think the the viewership that would have went down. Yeah, probably would have took a quick yeah, nose. Was- <laughs> so no, nah, don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, we got we got a show lined up for you today. Uh, the third episode, the third installment, installment, installment yeah. of. The, the, the devil's, devil's backbone. backbone. Oh yeah, yes, man. This is like we we've said it, uh, it. You know, at every installment, we said there's just so much out there, and it's true. You get these from Confederate soldiers to a, uh, you know, Franciscan Spanish, monk, Spanish, Spanish monk, soldiers. you know, and and you get, you know, spectral cattle out there and all kinds of stuff. I mean, a lot of weird yeah, things. it's a it's, lot of weird stories. You know, ultimately, like we said man. before, yeah, like we said before, or I said before, and I think you agreed with me that you know it's 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 a vortex. You know, where ley lines intersect, and there's that whole space. Well, no, time I'm, I'm not going to go on a limb and say it. that because I haven't. I don't know. Well, I don't know either. But that's just my. Those are my thoughts on it, though. Those are just my thoughts on but it. You also think it could be portals? Yes. Who knows? I, I, like that's the girl, my position like, like that. the girl that claimed at the party they saw the two cowboys come out of the yeah yeah that's really interesting mm-hmm. there you know and so gosh where do we begin this installment of devil's backbone there's so much but hey let's 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 go to you because i know you got tons of stories you got a dog man story out of there yeah i do i have a couple hey but let's get the let's get the email before you get started on that one man let's get Absolutely. the email out to people wolfman 88 at gmail.com we're gonna let you have uh, any any uh, a connection to us. If you want to get in touch with us, hit us up on an email, doswolfman88 at gmail.com. Definitely, definitely want to hear your stories, folks. This is what this show is about, telling your stories. So we're, today we're going to do, we're, we're going to interview someone that I had an, an encounter with out there. Not a dog man encounter. I've only had the, but anyway. We're going to talk to my brother. He came on the show uh, a few episodes ago. A few episodes, ago. yeah. And he talked about the house. Now, some stuff that had gone on at our house. But, folks, that wasn't the only ghost encounter I've ever had. I've had others. Um, considering my line of work, so, I've had ghostly encounters, not like all the time, but like I've worked, let's put it this way, it was all location-based. Yeah, I worked in uh, buildings. Yeah, you've been in security forever. For man. a long time, yeah. Run a security company, own a security company. And so having, have secu- have buildings that are haunted, yes. locations that are haunted, and having had to work at them. Oh, and one of them was a cemetery that wasn't far from the backbone. Oh. It wasn't far from there. It was, it was off of one of those roads that, that comes off of the backbone. And they were disinterring some, so they they were having to move the graves, the coffins. Out of them? Yes, yeah. oh, wow. yes. <laughs> Disturbing <laughs> because graves. of the property. There was some sort of property. The problem with the property, Ooh. and it was years ago. Gosh, at this point, probably fifteen years ago or something. And I only did it for a couple nights, but I can, I, like I said, there's a story attached to that. But right now, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about Dogman. Yeah. Been on Vic's show, like I've said many times. I've been on Vic's show many times, and. Have I heard this one before? This dog man story, I believe you have. I believe we've talked about this one. Right. I don't think we've gone over the second one. Well, whichever one you want to start with, let's go. Yeah, this one, this a, one, and we'll just, this one is we're gonna have to give him a name. Uh, Justin, we'll just call. Yeah, him we'll Justin. call him Justin. That'll work. We'll call him Justin. That's and not he, his real name, but yeah. no, that's not his real name. But you know the story, actually. Yes. Uh, the guy that worked with Scorpion. That, yes. That we were talking about his house being haunted the last time. Oh yes, yes, yes. Some of the things yes, that yes. went on there. He saw a goat man. Oh um, yes, that um, same out guy. The backbone. Yeah. This guy, they grew up together. They they lived two properties away from each other, and then. That that uh, Justin's grandfather died, and his dad had died years ago. Oh, before his grandfather. Before his, yeah, so his grandfather um, on his mom's side actually gave him property oh. out there that he inherited some property close to that. So, what ended up happening was he hunted, like a lot of people in Texas, they like to go hunting. Yes, and um, he had an experience out there. Oh, and that's the end of the story. That's, that's it. it? <laughs> no details people Come at home on. are like what 
unsubscribe no. <laughs> uh no no seriously what what uh happened to this guy he used to go up to the place of business where uh scorpion's boss worked yeah and he would they, he'd go up there sometime and shoot the breeze and talk shop and i went up there and we were talking and because scorpion's boss i'll call him dave dave okay, dave uh the guy that had the haunted house and the other things that went on in the last installment he told me he's like I, I I told him about a dog man and I we were talking about the goat man and he said yeah. I haven't seen anything like that but I know someone who has oh and he he talked to me back and forth for a couple of weeks kept saying I'm gonna get him up here I'm gonna get him up here well finally he did and so me and my roommate at the time we we jumped in the truck and we headed up there and we were like okay tell us the story and we got to meet Justin oh so Justin told us this story and it was a pretty good one. And I've never told this one on Vic's show. I was always kind of saving it so that I could do it on a segment about uh, Devil's Backbone. Yes. If I ever did talk about Devil's Backbone, because I always kind of wanted to do, I always kind of wanted to do a documentary about the Devil's Backbone at some point, you know, and maybe, so I gathered as much material about it as I could. Yes. And I thought maybe one day I'll do something with this, you know? And so I never did really, I always kept this, these two encounters kind of close to me, whatever. Right. And they were kind of similar in the way that that this um, dog man behaved. Oh. And I'm not saying it's the same creature. Correct. But we'll start with this first one, and then we're going to get into uh, some more of the other encounters. Of the weirdness out there. Yeah, and then we're going to do an interview. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, we got a good lineup tonight. So what we got going on <clears throat> with this encounter he went out hunting, and now he followed these trails. There's like a deer trail. He had to park at, at a certain spot, and he was about a mile in to, to the spot where he was going to post up. He was, uh, it, it, or it, I should say it was a mile in, and he was like halfway there. So I guess he's half a mile yeah. from the main road where he was at, which isn't really that far, folks. I mean, not that's when not, you think about it. No, no way, no. dude. And so he went in, and he was heading toward his spot, and he – thought that he saw something to his left that was moving in the opposite direction of him. That was when he first noticed it. And it was like it was moving through the brush. And he saw it like in the corner of his eye. And then he took full notice of it because it began to move back in the direction that he was going. So I can only imagine like, I don't know, we'll get back to the thoughts on that. But anyway, I have my thoughts about that. He, He keeps going and then he hears something behind him for a, a little ways and then what, he said about like a quarter of a breaking well, stuff, he said about a quarter of a mile he was hearing crunching okay. and, you know like kind of okay. snapping and then it then it began to become a little more frantic those were his words oh and so when i said fr- what do you mean by that he said well it was like it picked up the pace like it had f- kind of fallen back because it was some really thick brush to his left yes so my thoughts on this are that this creature got to a point where it could turn around and come out and come out and then come follow him, him yeah. down this trail, a deer trail. Mm-hmm. And he said that he eventually just turned around and he saw this thing on all fours, looked like a wolf. It was black, completely black. The whole thing was black. And he said its ears were sticking straight up and they were very pointy and they were close together. Now, he also said that he, he said it was only about 30, 40 yards from him. And I asked him, I said, were there any smells? He said, no smell that he could tell. He, you know, he, that wasn't a focus, you know. Yeah. He said, I didn't really smell, you know. But he said that I, I didn't, re- he didn't remember this, a smell anyway. But he did say that it, that it stood straight up. And he said that it stood straight up and then kind of hunched over. And that he remembers the arms being very long. Right, in this and and position. that they were re- they reached down to the knees almost, but oh, that wow. the legs were bent weird, like where the knees should have been. You know, was it kind of like it was the- that canine canine yeah. legs. We, you know, and and I'll tell you, like when me and Armando hear the stories about Dogman here in Texas, a lot of times, ninety percent of the time, that's what it is. It's a canine variant, the Dogman. Yeah, to me, sounds kind of weird to say canine variant because if you're talking about a dog man, shouldn't. Shouldn't that be yeah most of, canine? Most of, yeah, yeah, most of the the characteristics should line up with a dog. You know, mm-hmm. should be canid. So, for judging from you know, if they were weird like that, I, I, yeah, I think if the, I think if he would have seen like human shaped legs, you know, like us, I think he would have said something. So, 
I'm with you. Yeah, so I, I think that that it was a dog man. I mean, hundred percent. And um, and I asked this guy. I said, your friend has claimed to have seen a goat type creature, and he shook his head. And he said, yeah, he goes, I heard, I heard about what he saw. He goes, but this wasn't goat-like at all. It was wolf-like. Wow. And when I described, I said, so it was a dog man. He kind of shook his head back and forth and looked down and said, no, <laughs> it was a wolf. And I was like, okay, but I was like, but that's what people call it, you know, as dog man or whatever. That that's the, yeah. the, He didn't really understand that terminology. I think I had already heard a story because my brother, he is – he lived in Michigan for a long time. So yeah. he told me about the Michigan dog man and that whole phenomena way back. And so I, I always still kind of called it wolf, you yeah. know, a wolf I, or whatever. And most people in Texas point. did. Yeah. But when I said that it looked like a dog or a wolf, he was very specific that it looked wolf like. Oh man. Because they don't know what dog man is. No, you know? no, that's I think that's a, a fairly recent phenomenon that the name's been adopted. Well, no, not in Michigan. Not, oh, no, not in Michigan, Michigan because in Michigan, you know, they I'm talking here. Yeah, here, but my brother, like I said, he lived in Michigan for a long, long time, yeah. so he knew what dog man was. Right. He had heard yeah. the stories for a long, long time. And so in goat man also, but down here the, 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 there's nobody that was really using that terminology. And anytime right. I do st- somebody who hasn't heard the term dog man, they usually correct me and say, that it wasn't a dog. I don't get any, re- I, I haven't gotten any reports of it looking much dog like at all. I, I, and actually I'll be real honest with you to me. I don't like that term dog man. Cause it doesn't look like a dog to me. They look like werewolves, dude. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit up here and mix words with people, but you know, all these people, dog man, dog man, dog man. Well, Okay, yeah, the dog man name has caught on. Yeah, that's but that's, I haven't heard any encounters of anybody saying it looked like a Labrador retriever or a <laughs> Rottweiler. Yeah, that's true. So I think I'm with you. We'll just call it. It looks like a wolf or a werewolf. So yeah, I mean, wolf man. You know, yeah, it just it looked man, like a yeah. wolf man, and right. and and so a man wolf or whatever. I didn't. He, I asked him too if if there was any uh, noise associated with with how when it stood well, like up, the, like the popping. That yeah, I mean because reports. I you hear that all the time, you know. Yeah. And at that point, when I entered, when I talked to him about it, I had already heard stories from my hometown where that that was something associated with it. Well, that's interesting. So that was that's... not on the table. That he didn't hear that either. Well, oh wow. So yeah, I, I mean, he said he didn't remember hearing it, but then again, you know, when something happens like that, yeah, it's traumatic. Sometimes details just kind of go out the window. <laughs> yeah. So he, his thoughts were, how am I going to get back out of here? And he said that now he said that he stood there and they looked at each other for a long, long time. Wow. His words, not mine. His words were long, long time. Now, long, long time means wow. that you might have stood there for a minute, you might have stood there for thirty seconds because it just seems like it was a yeah, long, long time. Yeah, yeah, those kind of cases. But he told me he goes, it was a while. He goes, and I, I just, I, it's like we we're both getting tired of staring at each other. <laughs> but this creature wasn't moving, and he said that once it kind of took a step toward him, then he took a step back and decided he was going to get out of there, and that he just kept kind of walking backwards, walking backwards, and he had to make a decision: was he going to go up? You know, up the next uh, road, right? And, and Take then, the and long roundabout, the long ra- route, or because he, he only had about an hour. It was daylight. Okay. And he said he was only going to have about an hour left of daylight, and he did not want to be Ooh. out there in the dark because he didn't know if there might have been more. And so he was worried that if he went back in the same direction, that the thing would ambush him. So obviously that wasn't an option. So he was going to have to go all the way out to a dirt road, a gravel road, and then walk a couple miles, which were out of the way. Oh. So he had a hike ahead of him, yeah, and he he said it was the most unnerving, just looking around, head on a swivel, as they say, head on a swivel. And once he got to the the uh, the the road, the main road, yes, he had to walk about two and a half miles to his vehicle, and he said that on either side Ooh. of the of that road there was heavy brush, yeah. and that and that he didn't hear anything for about the first half mile. But then on his uh, left side, wh- where from where he was at, I yes. guess it was left or I can't remember if it was left or right side. Anyway, whatever side it was that he came out of, the bro- he, he yes. this, something began to parallel him. Now he said he caught a good glimpse of it when it was walking sideways. He said that he knew what it was. Oh, and that that he was just waiting for it to find a good spot to come out into the road at him, and he was just like, "I'm gonna have to shoot the shoot at this thing and do the best I can." That it just kept kind of stalking him, going sideways. And and that he would catch a glimpse of it in between the, the brush. It was real yes. thick, but he could see. 
And eventually, it just kind of, it sounded like it moved toward, in, toward back forward into the forest right. and just left him alone. And then he got to his truck and he was out of there. Shoot, I bet that was the longest two and a half the miles longest, he ever yeah, walked. The longest two miles wow. you ever walk in your life. So, I mean, when he was standing face to face, I can only imagine. I mean, for well, me, not face to face, but close. Yeah, well, forty even forty yards away, I would consider that face to face. Considering how quick, fast, agile, and strong now, he didn't are. say 30, 40 yards though. Well, no, um, no, how far? No, that's that was my word. Oh, that was your we estimate. Were, we okay, were, we okay. went out into the parking lot. Yeah. from oh. the building where they worked, and he kind of showed me, and I guesstimated okay, 30, okay. 40 yards. So I wanted to clarify that. Oh, okay, yeah, wanna, yeah. But either way, you know, when you're looking at a seven foot dog man creature looking at you yeah even that distance is almost and he did say <laughs> it's folks he face, did say it was seven to, to eight feet wow yeah and i and that, that's that was yeah that, that is definitely a charmin moment producing <laughs> you know <laughs> event i oh wow yep that i can only i wonder how he slept at night after that particular encounter well when he was telling me the story it had happened a few years before oh okay so yeah. so you know i didn't i didn't really ask him about nightmares and go into all that he yeah. seemed more like a country person that you kind know he, he said that he while. he also said that he had once seen a ghost out there on the backbone oh and uh but when he told me the story it was just real real vague, real vague brief. Not, not vague just brief, brief. Oh, okay like, you know, and I say it wasn't really, it wasn't much. It was just like he thought he saw what a lot of people see is an Indian. The Native American, yeah. Yeah, and it was like walking along the tree line when he was driving. Wow. And it just kind of vanished. The Native American apparition. Never so that, that is another very po very common one out there. Yeah. And and, and I also, I mean, like I said, I got a, I got a little people uh, a story from out there. But we're gonna we're gonna save that one for for another time. We have that, and then we have you know some of the little people stories out in oh, West yeah. Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that Fort Stockton good. area. We oh, had wow. some that's, stories that's, that came that's out of that area. One. That's good. But, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do an interview now with yeah. uh, my brother. There, this is what happened. Um, now I gotta hear this event. I yeah, I had I had a a couple weird things happen to me when I was out there. I'll go over the I'll go over the interview with my brother. We have him in the studio. And then we're going to talk up to him. We're going to talk with him about what happened to us during this whole event. Yeah, he was with me during this oh, event, and then oh, oh, oh. and then afterwards, I can talk about some stuff that happened to me when I was out there camping with some friends. All right, well, let's let's hear it, man. Let's get into it. With me is my brother Russell. Uh, they know you as Diablo. Oh, greetings, <laughs> greetings. Back again. Oh, hey, glad to have you, brother. So, I've heard. This encounter, a couple well, well, times. let's back up a little bit. The house, did you did you say that? No, no, no. This encounter, the yeah, house. we're, we're going to talk about that. But but, but we, if those that don't remember you, oh yeah, yeah, uh, he was the episode three, I believe it was the house. Yeah, it was episode yes, three. Yes, I believe it was. And we three, talked yeah. about the house. I believe that's the same one where we where we talked about gargoyles. Yes, I believe and, so. But this one, I mean, I guess uh, you're always going to share in some of Wolf's interesting and, and odd experiences and events i guess i guess it's kind of something you're destined to do brother well yeah we've uh been well brothers and we've been roommates for years so and we've done a lot of different stuff gone out together gone places so some of the stuff yeah we were both there so. hey, right, and let me let me amazing. just clarify episode four uh, it was episode yeah. four my, my bad episode three we interviewed uh scorpion yeah that, who's, yes. who's my best friend Yes. And then, and then you, brother, you now, this this we had we worked at a club, okay, and and I'm not gonna lie, we had some 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 rough and tumble friends, yes. and, and then and we had a couple friends that that uh, would would hang out with us regularly. One of them we called Spike, oh. and another one we called Loco, yeah. and another one his name was Cal. Interesting uh, names. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Cal and Spike kind of didn't like each other, uh. you know, and they actually. Had uh, some some bad blood. They always had a little bit of friction going yeah, on. Yeah, and and so we were all hanging out one night, and we were off, uh -huh. and and, and uh, we decided to go out to the Devil's Backbone and go check it out because we had watched a rerun of that uh, unsolved mystery story. You know, <laughs> and so I said, you know what, we can go out there and we can go check it out. Yeah. Hey. So that that night we all w went out there to check it out, and we I had been camping out there prior to that with a group of friends. And so, and I had kind of made friends with a guy that owned some land out there, an old guy. 
Um, he's no longer with us, but he, he was nice enough to let us use his land to go camping. And so we decided to go out there and check it out. And now we went to a place called Eagle's Nest or Eagle's Point, I believe. Something to that effect. Was it Eagle's Nest? Eagle's Point? Anyway, that whole area I'm now. With names. <laughs> yeah. Th- that whole area is now kind of built up. You know? Yes. But at of- the time, it wasn't. It was still wooded. Yeah, and and so and, and so in the mid '90s, late '90s, whatever it was, we we went out there, and that night, I believe Cal and Spike got into a fight. Oh, it because there there had been <laughs> finally came to it was a highly head. entertaining. It was highly entertaining. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, I'll just say I think Spike kind of won that one, but yeah, it was it was pretty it was a pretty uh, Spike was a wrestler in, uh-huh. in high school. He was a pretty tough kid, and and so he kind of got the upper hand. But that's neither here nor there. We were out there, and I was sober. I, I wasn't drinking. Um, now, I'll be honest. My brother had a couple beers, but none of us were drunk. We just had we had drank a little bit, and, but they yeah. had anyway. We had gone out there, and something very odd happened to us out there when we were at Eagles Point. Now, we were up at the very top. The, the, this road to get up to the top kind of spirals, yeah. and you're up on like a big, uh, kind of a big hill, small mountain. Yes, yes. So we were like, we got away from the group. And and uh, we went and kind of were hiding uh, down on this like slope that we later I went there in the daytime. I later on f- figured out that we were on the side of a cliff. I didn't even know it. <laughs> wow. I told my brother, I was like, "Oh my gosh, we didn't even realize we were, you know." <clears throat> but you know, we were having fun. Yeah, we were some uh, low crawling idiots <laughs> trying to trying to scare the other guys. Yeah, we were trying to scare the guys because yeah. because you know, we they, they, there were all these stories about this this scary place. So we we were lobbing dirt clods at them. Oh, you know? <laughs> and so they were like, "Wolf Diablo, where are y'all at?" Where are you guys at? And we're just like, we're, we're hiding. And then I yell down into the, the canyon and I'm like, ah, uh-huh. you know, and they're like, oh my God, I could hear you. You could hear them scrambling, <laughs> looking for us and you could see them, but they knew, they didn't know nowhere we, that we were at. We they were didn't at see their, y'all slip off, we were huh? at their feet level. Oh, okay. you know what I mean? And, and they had my two dogs and my dogs are, are freaking out that they could kind of smell, smell us, but they couldn't see us. And so they were freaking out. Mm. And so there was this whole, you know, this moment where we were just <laughs> messing around out there. Well, this commotion <clears throat> is the only the way I could call it. We caused some commotion out there. This guy, as we're getting up to tell him, hey, you know, we're right here. Uh-huh. This guy comes off the trail and just like appears. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. So it was weird. When that happened, D, tell, tell me from your perspective, what did you see or what, 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 what went on? I just saw some white guy come out of the... Uh, off the trail or out of the woods kind of and it was like wow that's kind of weird and random that some dude would just walk out it was it was fairly late too i believe i mean my, oh it was three in the morning yeah okay. so i mean it was just weird like what's this guy doing you know it was just it was an odd situation you know just out in the boonies and yeah. here comes this this good old boy from out in the country walking out there to where you guys are huh yeah and then he just you know, started up a conversation and was saying something about his vehicle had gone off the road and <clears throat> wanted to see if we could help him maybe push it back up onto the road. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we didn't see a vehicle when we got out there. So that was that was weird to me and my brother kind of look at each other like, what? Oh, wow. And I was so. like, what's this guy just been hanging out by his vehicle for hours or because we didn't see anything, anybody drive where we were at. All right. So yeah, what did I you guys see. do after that? I mean. <clears throat> Did you guys offer to help him well, out? Well, yeah, we did. We did. And then we told our friends that were right there, and they all saw him, too. Oh, they got to look at him, too? Callous yeah, everybody Spike. was there. Yeah, oh, we were all yeah. there. He wasn't invisible. I mean, he was standing right there. But what was odd about it was it was a moonlit night, you know, but it wasn't like, if I remember correctly, it wasn't a full moon, I don't think. No, but don't there was, was enough lighting that you could kind of see. But he, he was, it was weird. He was wearing, if I remember correctly, uh, like a light blue like one of those kind you see the Marlboro Man yeah, kind of jacket. I, what, jacket. I love that's what you would was call it. A it? Denim jacket, kind of like a denim jacket, but then it had like a one of those wool cuffs yeah, on the, the neck. Yeah, the wool collars. I remember those the kind of jacket jackets. that looked like it wasn't in style for a long, long time. Maybe the yeah. '80s or something. No, some of those were even gone by the '70s. I know they were big in the mid to late mm. '70s, and that pretty much after that they disappeared. Nobody really. Well, he them. he was wearing one of those oh, and. Wow. I thought he was kind of out of place, and he seemed very disoriented and, and kind of nervous. And when he began to talk to us, he asked us if we could help him move his, tr- his uh, not truck, it wasn't a truck, it was a, he called it a Jeep, 
but it wasn't a Jeep. When, when, when we went to where this vehicle was at, this is where... So y'all got, followed him there, huh? Well, where yeah. his vehicle was at? Yeah, it got really uh-huh. weird because when we got over there to where his vehicle was at... It's it was, one of the ones that had that weird camper looking back to it. Yeah, kind of okay. like a Bronco, but I, I don't... You couldn't even see what it was because where right. it was at, it was... It was <laughs> It was wedged between some some like saplings. It looked like some trees had grown up in front and behind it, and we were. I was like, how how did he get his vehicle lodged in between these trees? And there was standing water in the bed of it, you know, oh like because like, like there was like a camper thing on it. I yes. guess you could say. Uh-huh. And he he called it his Jeep, which I thought was odd too. And he's like he's like yeah, it's 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 my uh my my Jeep or whatever. And when we were talking to this guy. He said that he he had a saddle that was in the front seat and he grabbed it. Uh-huh. The saddle looked old. It looked uh, hadn't been used in a long time. Kind of dry, didn't? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I looked at it and it looked like it had been weathered. You know, okay. the leather on it. But the tires. Do you remember the tires, brother? Well, yeah, they looked old. Like you know, if, if a vehicle sits for a while and gets that, I don't know, almost like dry rot look or whatever. Yeah, from being out in the weather Cracked. so much. Plus yeah. the like, there was like weeds and grass and stuff like kind of up look like it had grown around them. grown oh, around wow. the tires so when we're trying to help him push we just you know we're, we're nice guys i mean to some stranger you know we're not trying to be, be whatever so we all got back and started pushing it and finally loco he he tells me he goes uh, what this what is and this guy he was in the army for a long time a, a good guy a pretty very astute very smart smart kid he's like this guy's lying He's like this. This vehicle could not have been here. He did not just, ha- just have this, accident. this vehicle. Yeah, it did look like there were tire tracks. Like when we went back and we looked with the flashlight, uh-huh. like there was a trail that went up, and like maybe somebody had gone off of this trail. Yes, and got and and you could see tire tracks that years had probably years ago had led to that spot. Okay, and he goes, "This vehicle has been here for a long time," <laughs> and so yeah. Then then we turn around and the guy's gone. Really? Yeah, the guy disappeared. And so we all were like, where'd he go? And so we're kind of looking for him. The saddle that he was holding was now s- still in the front seat, which I thought was odd. And I managed to open the door. And it was like, you know how you, I can't right. do the sound effects, but. It was a really but, creaky sound. Like it had been closed for a, a long time, you know, like, That's you know, strange, and so man. when I went to grab this saddle, there were spider webs on it, you know, and so then I was like, okay, there's standing water in, in the floorboard of the of the vehicle too, like it had been rained on and who knows what else. Yeah. And so I was just like, where did this guy go? He disappeared and obviously he put his saddle back into the vehicle. Yeah, man. it was really weird. So what happened after that? That you know, after he suddenly disappeared, and well, we guys... went back to the road, and then he just like popped up again and was like the ro- talking. Clarify the road. The road was a cul-de-sac that it yeah. ended in, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah so he just was well, there, like talking again, and like you know, saying, "Well, no, no, no." First, first Cal and Spike got into a fight. Oh, oh this is when Cal. Yeah, because we started arguing about the vehicle. Okay, uh, okay. got it. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember what part of the night the fight was. I just remember they fought when we were out there. Well, you had been drinking a little bit too, but not not as heavily as they had. Oh, they were they were yeah. pretty sad. I was sober the whole right. time, and so what ended up happening? We we got back to the cul de sac, and that's when the fight popped off. Okay, because there was some argument about this guy and who he was and what was and going it already on. Had some and Loco was like, other. "We need to go. This guy could be some sort of, you know, something. He, he might come and try to shoot Psycho us, Psycho or something. But if yeah. he has a gun, you know, and and yeah. and and uh, that was one of the few times I didn't have a gun. And so yeah. <laughs> I was like, "No, nah, we don't have, you know, if something were to happen, you know." So he was acting very strange, but he was very friendly. Yes. But I, uh, one thing you pointed out is his description of him, D. Well, yeah, he just something was off about him and like you know everything didn't click at that that point that evening you yeah. know but it was like you know he had kind of a I don't know, his overall appearance he had a weird look to him like the moon was out but it wasn't that bright right and he had kind of a like a mild glow to oh. him almost oh, wow. <laughs> yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Kind oh, of yeah. like he was kind of illuminated a little and not bit. like the cia kind of glow <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> So the effervescence yeah. level. So no, he he, he did yeah. look kind of glowy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so at this point, he disappeared, and then 
mainly you know spike and and and, and cal you said the ones yeah. got into it mm-hmm. they got into it because of arguing over what happened well in the it started out with that and, and cal they already had bad blood and cal was like well you think you know everything dude right and, so yeah they, and the way you talk you think you know everything dude you're the smartest guy in the world and, yeah. and spike was like i know more than you and, and then he's so like they got into it you know right? and the next thing you know he goes he goes okay the guy's a ghost you know and then, and then <laughs> oh my god spike was like maybe i don't like where did he go he just yeah. vanished did y'all and then Cal and him got into it. And next thing you know, fist flew, and it was just real quick. It popped off. Uh-huh. And then I just it culminated with Spike kind of suplexing him, oh, I guess. On okay. a, luckily, not onto the pavement. He got him onto the grass and was like, all right, uh-huh. boy, and was getting ready to just give him a, a good beat down. And then we, inter- we intervened. And just broke him And up. as I went to go break it up, yeah, my brother had one, I had the other. We look up, and here's that, that guy again. The Marlboro huh? Man again. Yeah. He's standing there just looking very odd. Now, this is one thing that I remember very distinctly. He had a cigarette in his mouth, and it was like he was smoking it, but there yeah. was no smoke. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, like a cigarette that wasn't lit or something, but he what? was doing the motions like he was smoking. <laughs> yeah, That's that was odd. That was weird. And, and then, you know, of course, the argument popped off, and he's like, he's like, Boys, there's no need to fight. He goes, I, he goes, you know, you guys are friends. You shouldn't be fighting, you know. And he goes, yeah. if you can't help me get my vehicle out, that's fine. He goes, can you just give me a ride back to my mom's place? Oh. Yep. So his mom had a place <clears throat> nearby. According well, to him. He, okay. According to him, uh, she owned a bar or tavern or whatever. And uh, he, he said it was close by to where we were at. So we're like, you know, sure, whatever. So me, him, and like I think Spike or one of it was three of us, I believe, got in the back in the bed, whatever, and uh, back in the bed, the bed of the truck, the bed of the truck, yes. <laughs> and uh, started heading towards where he was saying to go, and there was just—I don't even remember what we talked about, or it was just like small talk in the back. I just remember, you know, riding and looking at the guy and thinking There's something not right with this. He looked, and and the guys that were in the back with him, which was you and I think Spike, yeah. And y'all both kept saying he just looked weird, like he was glowing. Something wasn't right, huh? Very, very strange. And then when we got to this, uh, like, what was it, like a dilapidated building? Yeah, the place he claimed his mom owned the bar or whatever uh, that he wanted to be dropped off at. One of the main highways. Yeah, was uh, basically like an old beat-down building. You could tell it hadn't been in use for a few years. Wow. It was shut down, and there was a bar, like, real close, though, like it, I don't know. About a mile or two down the road. Not even or that far. Like, like that? it was within visual. Oh, oh you can and, see and, the lights. And we're like, are it you? Wasn't, sh- no, there were no lights. It wasn't on. Was oh, no. Well, it was closed because it was so late, but. Right, but you could it, see where it was. It at. was obviously, you know, the functioning bar. Yeah. We're like, are you sure you don't mean over there? He goes, oh, no, this is my mom's bar. We're like, okay, that's weird, too. Well, the dilapidated know? tavern that was not, well, in, not in use anymore. Yeah. Wow. And then he got out, and he, and this is also weird. He had the saddle again. And now I've talked to my brother about it. He don't remember him putting the saddle in the back of the truck. Yeah. And we don't remember him getting the saddle out of that Jeep, as that, he called it. Wow. Um, but he got out and he walked around the side of the building, was supposed to come back. And, and, and he was like, I'm going to go put the saddle up. He goes, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you, uh, uh, give you my, something my for, phone number. Right. And he said, and then uh, you come to the, to the bar and, uh, you know, one night and have a drink or whatever. And I'm going to give you my name and everything. And he walked around the, the back of the building. Well, he never came back out. Right. And so my brother and a couple of the other guys went around the building to look for him. And you guys said that it was like all weeds growing up back there. There was nowhere. Oh, uh, yeah. Y'all went back there to the, check. Yeah, the check building was yeah. locked up. Ooh. Hey, I'm not going to pass up a possible free drink in the future. So. Oh, man, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got to build that credit up with these. Hey, man, we gave you a ride. You give us a drink. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when you got back there, D, when you got back there, uh, you said, weeds and stuff so i mean what did you guys think at that point in time i was i don't know i didn't know what to think i was just like this is just bizarre something's not right here that that is that and there is right there now i one day we, this came up not too long afterwards and we were at the club and we were talking to a friend of ours named jerome now jerome he's i can that's his real name he's a good friend of mine uh, from germany he lives in, in california and we talk all the time but but he we were talking about this and we were talking about some of the stuff that happened in our old house because he lived yes. with us. And we were talking about the ghosts. And my brother goes, you remember that ghost we picked up at the devil's backbone? And I was like, "That you mean that weird guy? And then he, you, 
you 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 looked at me and you go, is that what he was? A guy? Because. <laughs> I think he was a ghost. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I don't know what he was. And then Spike was very adamant. He was like, no, dude. He goes, you didn't get out and go around the side of the back of the building. He goes, there was nothing back there. Open field. Where did this guy go? The doors were locked up and it looked old, dilapidated. Like it had not he was been, nowhere to be where, found. Where huh? did this guy go? He wasn't gone that long. And, you know, and so... I said, won't you guys go see if he's okay? Because I wasn't worried about him giving us anything. Right. Well, he could have been raptured. He claims that he didn't have a wallet. Okay. Um, He didn't have, because he's like, I don't have my ID, my wallet. When we asked him his name, uh, and now here's the thing. He did give us a name, and I'm not going to get into it, because what ended up happening was we went looking for that guy. Yes. So Because after we had the conversation where D was like, they were very adamant that he was a ghost. Yes. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe he was. We decided to go out with some of our friends, one of whom was, I think, was with us that night. And we actually went out back out to the, to the, to the location. backbone. And we went to that tavern that was close to that dilapidated one. Yeah. And I don't even think that one's in use anymore. I think it's something else now, new owners or something. Probably not. It's been years. Uh, 20 year, 22 years okay. probably. Um, so we went we went to that tavern, and we went in, and we began to ask questions of the bartender. Yes. And I said, hey, we gave a ride to such and such. And he said his mother owns this tavern, I guess, that's next door. That's down the road, I guess, a little bit down the road. Mm-hmm. And she's like, that one hasn't been in use for decades. And I'm like, okay, well, he told us that his mother, and we just assume maybe they, this is where, this is the place his mom owned. And she, they kind of gave us the cold shoulder. I mean, how, how do you explain how, that What's your perspective? Yeah, the, uh, the, the climate in the room just changed, like. They started looking at us funny, and we could tell that something was up, and they didn't. They they weren't comfortable talking to us. Didn't really want us there. Well, that's that 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 would yeah, be yeah. One of the guys was like in there playing, sure. like throwing darts or something, and he came up to the bar and asked us if we were if we were if we had a problem. <laughs> and wow, you know the guys that I was with. If we'd had a problem, they, they, they would have known. It would have yeah. been their problem, believe me, brother. And so mm-hmm. I was, I looked at him and I was like, "Why is there a problem?" And he goes, "He's like, well, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously upsetting people, you know." And I'm like, "What are we doing wrong?" And so this bartender, uh, there was an older man that was there that had gone to the back, yes, just kept giving us the stink eye. And then the the, the female bartender yeah. finally came back up, and I said, "Look, we're not here to cause problems. Uh, we'll leave." And as we got outside, she there was like a like one of those little things that that, that, that the bartenders flip up. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, yeah. I hear at the end of the bar, so it's like at the end of the bar. There's just like a little little door little that door, they flip yeah. up. To, they come out of the bar. She uh, she followed us out the door, and she, we got outside. And she kind of looked around, and she said, "I'm just going to be honest with you. The person you're describing has been dead for a long time." Oh wow. Yeah, that he had an accident out there, and that he, you know, and he that was it, away. and he passed away, and I guess he had gone, he had been missing for a while because apparently, I guess that road that we were on had not yeah. been out there and been paved for that long. Yeah. So yeah, that was weird. And then I, yeah, we all get in the truck and we're like, whoa, okay. And then I looked at my brother. And I said, okay, I guess he was a ghost. <laughs> Maybe but yeah. That is until what was- until hearing her say that, you know, when she said that, everything made sense and really clicked into place. Yeah, and uh, and and, I, and oh my dude, look at this. Woo, I, folks, I'm sitting here in this. <laughs> <laughs> the hair stands up when I think about this story, and my hair is standing up on my head too. When she said that, we were stunned, and I, we, we, all the way back home, we briefly talked about it, and then we were just quiet. <laughs> we got back yeah. to the house. You had to process all and then, that, Yeah, right? and then we had a friend, and it was earlier in the night, you know, and then my friend, he, he worked a swing shift. He got home, my, my German friend, and he goes, well, was it a ghost? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I think so. Oh, wow. What did yeah. you say to that? Uh, he just kind of shook his head up and down. He had a couple... Incidents himself, yeah, in his life. Oh, uh, German guy, you know, <laughs> right. living in Germany, he had a ghost story. But 
Yeah, that was that was uh, that was pretty crazy. And of course, that yeah. same roommate had incidents happen at our apartment. So he was like, "Yeah, he got." So you know. he was in the know. He's had his own. Experiences, nobody, so. nobody was doubting it at that point. I think the only person that kind of doubted it was me. Really? You yeah, were the- I just, I just was like, I didn't sit in the back and look at this guy and, and go, "You, didn't well, get you to look study like him. You're, you're you're the color of the, the blue sky," because everybody kept saying he was bluish gl- glow. A, I didn't observe. Wow. I just saw the jacket yeah, like and the real glow. pale bluish white, very blue. Weird. I didn't see that because I wasn't paying attention to that. And I and I actually spoke to him a little more than others. And he kept he kept just telling us, "You're very kind people. You're very kind people." He wasn't drunk and he didn't seem inebriated at all. Working in a bar for. 20 years i know what people drunk people are like yeah. he wasn't yeah and, and he was very polite he talked about dismissing his mother and then being confused sometimes yeah he kept saying that he was confused and we were like did you just wreck right now did you hit your head no no i'm okay i've been out here for a while i'm just trying to find my way back home but uh i just need a ride and then he said but if you could help me push my vehicle out of here i can Thank i can drive it home oh those kind of things, you know, and yeah. I just thought maybe he hit his head or something. Yeah. He just uh, wasn't ready to accept it, you know, what had happened maybe and move on or whatever. Uh, That's a weird. speculation. I, I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that kind of thing makes sense. You hear about people's encounters with uh, entities that are stuck in a certain place because the, the you know, their death, the manner of which they died was so traumatic that a lot of their energy is stuck there. And then, of course... So people see them, you know, they've reported, I've seen a lot of ghost shows where they talk about uh, haunted cemeteries. There's one supposedly somewhere in Chicago where there's a lady that walks along Yeah, the like side. a phantom hitchhiker. Yeah, yeah. and I did some like research that. on it after that. And I'm thinking it's, it's, it's a, it was, I'm thinking because it was quite possibly a very, very nasty accident or whatever happened, but it was very trauma, traumatic and it. It just left that indelible energy. Yeah, know, I right couldn't there. tell you what that was going sig- on with that, with the saddle that. and with all the, uh, yeah, the, the whole strangeness. Thing was weird. Yeah, it was quite, a, you know, well, you know, if usually if, if something like that happens all of a sudden, you know, it, it would make sense. You would think that, yeah, well, the energy is stuck there, you know, in that spot. I, he That's, seemed like a nice man. I'd hate to think that he was out there you know, wandering the earth or whatever. That's a horrible thought. Yeah. But. It makes you wonder, too, you know, if you could have gotten a date on when this happened to him, you know, or an approximate Mm -hmm. date, because if, like you said, that you didn't look like the road had been paved for very long. Uh, No, no, I didn't say it didn't look like it'd been paved. I I just found out later that it had not been paved. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I I was, I'm correct. That 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 road wasn't paved until like the late 90s or around the time that we had gone out there. Yeah. Like, I guess right right before that, it only been paid for like a year or so. Oh, okay. So, obviously, or way before that, it was, they were just rocky country dirt roads out I, there. I, I have no idea. Could have yeah. been muddy for all I know. Yeah, that too. I mean, Might have just rain. been trails up in there, and he was riding around, and he and they just yeah, they left easy, his vehicle yeah. up there for whatever reason. I have no idea. I could not. Wow. I could, you know, yeah. the, the odd thing was, though, that you can I guess at the details. We yeah. went back up there in the daytime. Yes. And we... Uh, not not my brother, but me and, and a couple other people, and we we couldn't find that same vehicle. Which you, I don't. Were you in the right spot? Were you, I, you know, I don't know. It was such a big area. I don't really right. know. We we went all around around that, and I was like, I don't see it because it was back up in some brush. Oh, okay. You know. Yes. And I can only imagine how many spiders were around me when I was. <laughs> there. Yeah, I know. You don't have an affinity for spiders. I was laying all. on the side of that cliff, and I thought, man, there's probably tarantulas right next to me. <laughs> But, wow, uh, but just overall, this just appearing out of nowhere. And, well, actually, another thing on that. You said he, he appeared somewhat bluish, but yet with a little bit of a glow. When you looked at his face and his shape and everything, did it look translucent or actually solid? Mm, I think I would have noticed translucent. Right. It looked solid it to me. It seemed solid, wow. but just with that weird kind of glow. I don't know. It was weird. Oh, wow. That's that's just mind blowing. I mean, he yeah. seemed like he was there, you know, which is odd. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is one of those those uh, you know encounters with 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 a with a ghost entity, which whatever you folks, whatever you want to call it, it seems like this is one of those benign ones where you're just. I know a lot of people have it made me think about over the years. Uh, it was actually kind of sad. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. You know, if that's what it was, then it, it was just sad. You know, and folks, when I tell stories, I, I'm not, unless I'm 100% definitive in what I believe this, you know, I've always kind of reserved my, you know, and so I, I, I really don't know. I, I, it's not really something I like to think about. Yeah. Just because I feel like if someone's out there and they're trapped, I... I yeah, and you can only imagine what it was like whenever the about event that. happened to him, you know. It's, it's but, just a testament to... to the reason this story is, you know, that we didn't tell it in an earlier episode is because I kind of had to psych myself up to even talk about it. Because, I mean, we talked about it over the years, you know, with people, but I always kind of end up feeling sad after I tell the story. And so it's just kind of like a, I don't know, man, I just have, I have emotions about it. And I feel like it is something that is attached to that whole area. Yeah. And the, the person that I was... <clears throat> really close to at that time mm-hmm. she told me you know that she thought it was a ghost like 100 percent. right yeah. when we turned the first story when i first told her about it she was like yeah it's a ghost that's even before we went out there to visit the wow. tavern or whatever but you know if you're ever out in the devil's backbone there's a lot of haunted places out there a lot of scary spooky stuff yeah, it weird seems stuff. like it never fails to deliver when Beautiful you want a place. dose of high strangeness it'll the devil's backbone will deliver so, with that being said, that, oh, wow, that's some craziness. But anyways, thank you so much for being with us, D. Oh, no problem. I enjoy it. Man, I'm glad this was great. I had perspective from two people of the same event. To me, that's, dude, I'm getting chills thinking about this because, wow, that's all I can say for that. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You guys got yeah, no problem. Awesome yeah, show, brother. You Have can a contribute. good one, brother. Thanks again. Thanks again. So... Did you want to get into the last Dogman oh, story? No, I do. Do we have enough time? We have All enough right. time? Cool. Our, our, our tech guru slash sound guru and our creative director slash taskmaster has given us the thumbs up. So let's do it, brother. So we have we have a, a Dogman encounter that, that I was introduced to by these same people that, were, that I knew from my friend where he worked at. And I, I was fascinated that they lived out there. And, and you know, they... Had, there was a couple that lived out there, hey, and awesome. they actually would go to this uh, place where where my friend worked pretty frequently because they lived they they had lived out there but they moved into town, and so th- I would see them up there sometimes, and they were they were very um, an interesting couple. They're very hillbillyish, <laughs> but they were good people. Yeah, hey, and they would they would talk sometimes and tell stories, and I heard their story. Uh, before I heard Justin's story. Oh. And so th- this these people, man, uh, man and woman, they lived on a property together out there. And they their their family had been out there for a while. I guess it was their parents' property or whatever. Yes. Or his parents' property. And so they, they had two encounters. And one was very brief. They, they saw this thing. Uh, they had a dog that had disappeared. Uh-huh. Just gone, just disappeared. And they were coming home from whatever, and they had this kind of like long uh, road to go down to get to their, you know, yes. to the house. And as they were getting close, like like closer to the house, they saw this thing kind of running across the field that was in front of and to the left, I guess they said. The driver, I guess would have been the driver's side. Yeah. And he, the, 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 the man said that he saw it run across the field and then go across their gravel driveway and then uh, go on the, th- past the fr- through the front yard and then out into the pasture that was adjacent to their house oh man. and it was it, it disappeared and it was a black solid black creature they saw it it was in the evening was but they totally got a, dark they got a good look dead. at it no I, th- I think he said it was like close to dark oh, but so they dusk. saw it yeah. the, they were already using headlights but oh, they okay. saw it because he said my lights illuminated it, but it wasn't complete. But he said it was dusk. Yeah. So it wasn't completely dark. I yeah. would say. So that was that encounter. But they all. They, something else happened to him though. They were out in the brush, doing hog some hogs, try, trying to see if they could they could track some hogs. Oh, okay. And uh, according to him, and something was following them. Something was following them, and they were walking around a tank. And now, folks, when we say tank down here in Texas, we're not talking about a, you know, an Abrams tank or a, a, a Panzer tank. We're talking about, 
<laughs> talking about a tank of water. That's a, yeah, that's our word for a man-made pond. Man-made pond that, that we that we use down here to to uh, for the cattle to drink out of. Yes, because there is a lot of cattle down here in Texas. Believe me, this is beef country. Yes. So anyway, they 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 were going uh, walking around this tank. And they hear like a kaboom, you know, in in the water. Like he oh. said that they heard a kaplunk, I guess. And they look and they see this creature standing on the complete opposite end of the tank. Oh. And it's black, and it's on. It's standing straight up, which was just shocking. Like they were just like, whoa! Looked like the creature they had saw running going, across in front of them. Acro- yeah, running, ac- loping across their property. That that, wow. that the, Now they said this incident happened about a week later. And they were they were just out in the in the in the brush going through the pasture, and this thing and but they didn't have <clears throat> any cattle missing or anything like that in that area, right? But there was a lot of game yes. animals, so I mean I guess that's why this thing didn't really need feel the need to attack their cattle. They didn't seem to have any problems with it, and he said they did own a few head of cattle, but it was just for personal butchering. For personal whatever. consumption. Yeah. yeah. So they they weren't, but th- th- they both were holding rifles, and it just was staring at them. Why it chose to throw a a rock into the water to get their attention, I have no idea. Wow! But they but they both they took it almost as like it was telling them to go away. Oh, okay, I see what you're um, saying. Yeah, maybe this thing was territorial and decided this is my watering hole. Go away. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was claiming that water. <laughs> well, maybe so. But they they took it as like this thing was telling them so. They started to back away, and they didn't want to really go left or right because they didn't know which way this thing was going to go. Correct. So they just decided to go back, 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 and then go the complete opposite direction from where that thing was standing. Yes. And he said, and she said, that that it took them kind of out out of the way of where they needed to be. And they did not want to go to the tree line and then go into the forest because, obviously. Yes. So they just kind of walked through the pasture a ways. They see the thing still standing there, just kind of looking at them. They felt like this thing had followed them because they had heard something, but they didn't know if it was, you know, what it was, a deer or a hog or something. And they didn't really, they knew it was something following them. And, you know, of course, a deer or a hog's probably not going to be tracking you. No, no. <laughs> uh, but but they were just, they didn't know what to make of it, you know. The coyotes and whatever out there weren't big enough to do that, and they had they said that they had they had not seen mountain lions out there, but they know that they exist out there. Yes, and so they weren't sure what it was. Of course, there have been Bigfoot sightings out in that area yeah. too, but that area where where they where they're from. Did they give any real description of it other than the initial one that you know you were telling us about? Yeah, and th- so so they they ended up going walking toward the tree line until yeah. they got to where this thing was like just. It, it had disappeared. Right. So then they turned and they walked back. They doubled back and they went back around and they and they walked a long way around that tank, giving it a wide berth. Yeah. And when they got back toward the house, they they went through the bar. They went through the barbed bar gate or whatever. Mm-hmm. They turn around. They see it standing there in the field. Oh. At that point, about fifty yards away. <sighs> I would estimate from the distance they showed me. Oh, and they, it was just standing there looking at them. They said that she said that you could see. Uh, she's like, I have very good eyesight. She's like, I could see its chest heave. Like it was, it was like oh, it, was it was breathing. breathing like it yeah. was almost like it was angry. And <clears throat> they said that like there wasn't any weird howls or noises prior to that. Yes. But that after that night, they heard it every night, like something howling and bellowing. And they eventually moved into town. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> yeah, they that their cats went missing and their dog went missing, and so they figured out that that's what it they was. This much, thing had yeah. decided to. I have a theory about this, and I'm going to tell you, folks. I think that whenever these dog man, if you want to call them that, wolf man, when they get, I think when they get to a certain point, they get pushed out of their pack if mm-hmm. they're males, maybe. Yes, and. You know, or even females, I don't know. They get pushed out of the pack for whatever reason by the alpha or whatever. That's why you will start to encounter them on people's property while they're by themselves. Yeah, I, I would just judging from from pack behavior, you know, that's documented about wolves. You know, if if you're not, for lack of better words, if you're not towing the line and doing what the alpha does, you know, you're going to get the boot. You know, that's if he doesn't kill yeah. you. Yeah, and 
I would I would tend to say that females probably if they're of the lineage of the alpha, I'm, I'm guessing that they just they find another pack, if you will, or something. I, I, that's just my guess, you know. But if they're like wolves, yes. If they if they share that particular trait in common, so I mean, this is just anyway. Wow, I, this is just mind blowing. But did the couple ever say how tall that creature was? Did they ever get an estimated uh, height? On yeah, it? same thing. It was like seven foot. Wow. But but they, they they said they said that it was maybe seven foot. Oh. So this thing wasn't probably as a big. Full grown full, male. I, I, maybe not. Yeah. Another did, thing that did, did happen to male? them though that I didn't ask the, oh, the male okay. female genitalia question. I, yeah. I don't. I don't really don't really like asking right. that, but <laughs> I guess it's relevant, you know. Right. But they they did say that they they had something happen to their vehicle uh their truck got vandalized oh and like the the windows had bust been busted out on on the drivers uh and uh, side of the windows wow and that it looked like somebody had taken a rock and just smashed them out oh my god and so yeah they had gone into town with uh, their, their other car and then when they came back the truck had been vandalized they did find Sheesh. like um a claw like what looked like claw marks scratchings on the one side of this uh, house that they were at Dead God. so they just decided to leave well, they, they sold that property and then moved out of there <laughs> and and folks that that whole corridor has got a lot of uh what i find interesting though it, it seems to be the bigfoot and dogman encounters are on two different sides of that. Oh, really? Of the backbone. Kind of like as if they've delineated the middle of yeah, this area. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that, that, know, the, the, that they the were boundaries. having a dog dogman encounters over there where Justin lived, but then further on down where the guy that, that ran the, the, the business that my yes. friend worked at, his property was further down, and then there was like this bottom, and then this further down in there, there was like another area. Yes. That seemed to be where the Bigfoot sightings were coming from. Man, can you imagine being right there at the intersection of that stuff? Uh, well, that's, that's the devil's <laughs> backbone, folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, you know, Bigfoot, Dogman, and whatever else is out there. I haven't gotten a whole lot of reports about Bigfoot or Dogman out there. I just got those. Those, yeah. But, I mean, and, it's but, still but I mean, you know, and, and who knows if maybe – dog man that particular dog man got pushed out of a pack it, it might be it may be because if you go further south from there and then to the southwest i had a report out near kerrville yeah that's that's on the like more or less the bottom edge and outer edge of the the, the devil's the whole pack rim yeah. yeah and yeah. then going further south there's you know just to the north um of san antonio yes to the west northwest yes but now they've they built it all yeah, up out there the last 20, 30 years. It's been then SeaWorld and Six Flags. Lots of development out because, there. Because San Antonio used to not have either one of those, and now no. they do. Mm-hmm. But San Antonio has just grown, and, and so it's sprawled out. Yes. And so that whole area, there, there used to be a lot of Bigfoot encounters. I was looking at like this map, and there were a lot of encounters from the, the 70s on into the early 90s. Oh, and then wow. they kind of stopped, and then they kind of moved further west. But that whole region, if you if you ever come to Texas and you want to go look around, Devil's Backbone, folks, I think that's all the time we have for yeah. t- today. How much time do we have? Oh, we don't have much time at all. Yeah. Well, I did have a little people story from out there. Hey, next episode. But we will eventually get to Future cover. Episode. We will cover that. A lot of people call them the Duendes. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and yeah. In, in Mexico they call it a duende, or in Spanish they call duende. it duende, duende, el duende. So little people, hey, that's always an interesting. Topic. I don't do Wendy's anymore because I got really fat. Well, yeah, from doing Wendy's, but I did like. And Wendy's. so now I have to do snack. I kitchen. used to love their their hot and spicy chicken sandwich. I really, used to, when it first yeah, came I, out, you know what? I used to love to. food from their period, and yeah. so now I just can't. I can't. Uh, I can't do Wendy anymore. <laughs> and I wouldn't want you know. Whew. So, anyways, folks, this has been our little uh, episodes on the Devil's Backbone. We can say this. If we get more stuff on the Devil's Backbone in the future, you can bet we're going to do another one. But right as it stands right now, this is pretty much all we got. And we've got a lot of other oh, topics no, to Now, you're jumping the gun on that. What? you got more? No, I, I don't have a ton, no. But I do have a few other ghost oh, encounters. Geez. But they're not. They're, you know, folks, I'm, I'm not going to come out and be like, oh, look, we're going to do a whole show. No, we've done three shows on the yeah, backbone the backbone so we're kind of this is where we're wrapping it up here yeah and then, then we're going to move forward from there but stay tuned 
every week we're going to have some interesting stuff for you, a ton of interesting stuff. Um, we're going to, we're going to eventually start having guests and other things uh, that are going to be coming and going, you know, like more, more guests, I should say. Yeah. And so one, one of the things I wanted to touch on really quickly is, like I said, some of these stories I'm going to talk about from the backbone will be incorporated into yes, other shows. Yes, yes. But yeah, that's it for as far as a show on the backbone. On the backbone. Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely. But it's amazing. And, uh, Care to tell the folks uh, the email one more time? Absolutely. It's doswolfman88 at gmail.com. Doswolfman88 at gmail.com. Hit us up. Let us know what's going on with you in the world of the paranormal. Uh, we're open to any and all emails as long as you're not threatening us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, we're we here to, you know, we want to hear your story. We, we would, we'd love to tell it. And we'll get to it as fast as we can if you send it in to us. Absolutely. We'll, and I just want to leave you guys with one more thing. Hey. Understand, se habla español. So if you know friends or Spanish speakers and, and they can't give you their story really good in English or any other language, se habla español. We should have said that a long time ago. Yeah, se habla español. If you speak Spanish and you, you, you know, if you're out there and, and you have friends that have stories that are Spanish speakers, yeah. you can send them to us and we will do an entire show where you can't understand it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. No, no. Th- th- we, that way we can read the emails and then we'll tell their story yes. from Spanish to English. Oh, yeah. We can translate them. So it's definitely... Thank you so much, folks, for being uh, with us tonight. Wolf. And again, thanks to D. He was on the show with us. Thanks again, brother. And uh, with that... Y'all have a good one. Good night. Good day. Wherever you're from, whatever planet, region of space you're from, sign on.